pregnant for many years and I've seen things happen. I have been close to people in power right from the beginning, right from independence. Uh, Mr. John Al-Sukutu, Abu Kartafa Abalewa, and General Yakubu Gawan. Each one of them I was very close to and I knew how they dedicated their lives towards serving this country. And I know they were very good people. But as they continue in their, their uh, very difficult assignment, they came to a situation when people around them, not all of them, some people around them tried to build walls between them and other Nigerians or between them and the realities of life in Nigeria. And they heaped praises on them. They, they made them Democrats until they came unconsciously to believe in what these uh, flatterers said. They misled each and every one of them. And I know that I'm not as strong as any one of them. Whatever happens to them could happen to me. And that was what I did. When President Shagari swept back to power, the warning signs were loud and clear. Nigeria's economy in a terrible mess. Widespread corruption at the highest government levels. Shagari tried to combat both. Only two days ago, he announced tough austerity measures. But Nigeria's debts have piled up alarmingly since the oil boom of the 70s collapsed. There are acute food shortages, chronic unemployment, and health and education services in a shambles. And in a country bedeviled by tribal animosities, Shagari's appeals for unity have been ignored. We don't want division. We don't want one north-south confrontation anymore. We want all Nigerians, wherever they are, to regard themselves as brothers and sisters. Shagari did try to solve the crisis by expelling two million illegal immigrants who had come to Nigeria to find work from neighboring West African states. He accused them of taking jobs away from Nigerians, and his move to 